once again, I'm going to draw what I... I'm not sure what I'm going to draw, but I want to draw while I'm talking because it probably, allowing me to concentrate on something else will probably let me get the ideas out clearer. And I, I will have to, I won't overthink what I have to say. But I wanted to talk about this book here, or this series of books, The Ranger's Apprentice. And, yeah, I just want to talk about them. Because they're very easy adventure books. And... I say easy in the sense of they're easy to read, they're fun, they're not overly complex when it comes to themes, there's the good guys and there's bad guys, and there's betrayal and stuff like that, but the good guys are the good guys and the bad guys are the bad guys, and that doesn't really change. It's a quite classic Master Apprentice plot for the first book mostly, and the rest, then there's other books where that theme is always there. The main character is an apprentice to a master, and it's like ten books, and they're quite easy, they're very easy to read, they're quite short, and they're great fun. I've reread them a lot, because they're very heartwarming, and they're, they're, they're cool, like they're, they're, they're easy to adventure, but that doesn't make them bad, they, they have cool stories, they're well thought out, and it's a, it's a good way to relax. And when it comes to reading, because I like to read a lot, I like to read as much as I can, and I, I like to read difficult books. But sometimes difficult books can be a bit difficult. And uh, the the example that comes to mind is I months ago I decided to read through the entirety of the Lord of the Rings for the first time. I tried before, but I'd never gotten through it uh, entirely. So I was like, and I I had time on my hands. I was. I was every day. I was taking long train rides, so I thought, you know, I'll I'll, I'll read uh, the Lord of the Rings, and I got through the first book, and I got through half of the two towers, and I just couldn't take it anymore. It wasn't like they're great books, but they're difficult to get a to get through. They're complex. They're dense. They're very descriptive. They're very theme heavy, and it can weigh on you after a while. So. I, t I put down the two towers for a while, and I read through like five of these, of this series. I, I probably even, I probably didn't even start on the first one. Because the cool thing about these books, again, is that you don't have to read them in order. They're each independent adventures with the same characters, but you don't really need one to know the other. And they're great. And... They've been on my mind as well because I'm the, I'm working on a project on a narrative project, and I wanted to make I want it's I wanted to make it a fantasy adventure. And though I like you know I like adding themes and I like you know deeper meanings, I I don't I think I've come to realize the best stories that's not the main stay, like themes are themes they're background they're depth that you can explore, but the the important thing is the story, is the plot, it's the what gets you hooked. The themes don't get the, get you hooked. The themes add to it. Uh, whether And you can take many examples. So, I've had to kind of step back on this project and think how to make it a, a cool adventure, you know, how to make it interesting um, before it's it's the before it's deep or theme heavy, which it probably will end up being as well because that's just kind of how I've I've envisioned this project. Something that I might share in the future on this channel, but yeah, I'd like to I probably I'd like to talk more about books on this channel, and this is oh, oh heavily this is the first one the ruins of Gorland. Spy guy called John Flanagan, and I really I recommend them to anyone really because like if you know someone that's young and you want a book for them to start reading and they want to get hooked on something this is very good this is brilliant and and it's you can go all ages like I'll read it I'm eighteen and I'll read it again maybe it's because it's a bit nostalgic to me but if you if you know someone or you yourself are fourteen or fifteen or even younger, 12, 10 if you want to have a reader, 10, 
or you want to you want to start this is great they're not difficult to understand the plots aren't too complex and it's just it really is a page turn like you'll get you'll read through the books as fast as you can get them there's also a like follow up series there th is there a couple there is there is another there's a third one now but i've never read that one but there is a follow up called brother band which is in the same world but a different set of characters in a different part of the world that is explored in these series and they're very good i might even say i like them a bit better but these are great brother band is the other one if i didn't mention that by the same guy john flanagan Oh, yeah, I'd like to make more stuff about this. I don't necessarily want to analyze what makes them great. Like, maybe these videos are just meant to be like, here, I recommend some stories for you. Or, well, it's also the thing, because I think I think this medium could be awesome for getting, you know, people with similar interests or similar thoughts on something interested. Uh, as in, recommend me. Adventure stories. Recommend me... And when I say adventure stories, it doesn't have to be necessarily easy to read, uh, family-friendly kind of stuff. As in, similarly, I've kind of been thinking about Conan and stuff. I've been reading through them again, but several of the comics. Because that is another example of adventure. Maybe even a more exaggerated example than this because it's 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 very much a visual medium but conan is it's the epitome of sword well sword and sorcery uh, which i think it started that genre it's blood swords sex and murder and it's purely that mostly there is there's very little else to derive from it there is hints of it at times and i think that it's an interesting thing to explore and i might at a future video, because there was there was one issue that left me thinking a lot. But yeah, recommend me some stuff, and let's talk about that. What do you think? What do you think about that whole relationship between an adventure and theme of story and plot? How a good story, a good story has both. Like it has a obviously it's going to have a good plot line. I mean, not necessarily. Actually, that's not true. But a, a good, a successful story will probably have will have to have a good plot, uh, a good plot structure. But let's talk about themes and story because I was talking just yesterday with some of my friends about Halo and how it's some of the stories are quite simple, like the, the stories that don't need to be complex. But then there's themes that you can read into them and hit and meanings that you can derive from them, whether intended or not. And but whether the, and if they're not intended, that doesn't mean they're less valid because of it. So, yeah. If if you have any experience with writing narrative, do you start from themes? Do you start from characters? Do you start because I've also. Been, this is this is getting much deeper than it should be, but just to finish up, I've been looking at kind of what what makes a story work, and people divide it in plot, characters, and setting, or variations of that, or maybe four ideas. So yeah, adventures, short adventure books. Read read this if you're interested. As I say, they're easy read. They they have there's you know digital Kindle versions or um, yeah, versions of these books that you can read and they're good they, they're kind of a uh, to give you a quick platform to, to compare them to they're like real world parallels historical parallels to, to countries and nations and warfare the, there's, there's like a fictionalised Britain and there's a fictionalised um, Arabia and there's a fictionalized uh, Norwegian like Viking country and it's very interesting it's very interesting and I I very recommend I, I very recommend it I very much recommend it 
Ja. Tycker jag. 